The next thing we're going to look at are load lines. And so just like we saw with our BJTs, for MOSFETs, these can be a useful tool for visualizing the mode of operation. We're going to find these by doing KVL around our drain source loop. So similar to how we looked at our collector emitter loop for our BJT. So let's consider the circuit from the previous example. So we just had our emitter, or sorry, we had our drain resistance and nothing else in the circuit. So from the previous example, what we had was our VDD was just equal to IDRD, so the voltage drop across that drain resistor, plus our VDS. So we didn't have a source resistor or anything like that. So what we can do is we can rearrange this equation to be in point slope form. And so we can say that our drain current ID is equal to negative one over RD times our VDS plus VDD divided by RD. And so now with this being in point slope form, we recognize that this term here in parentheses is going to be the slope of our line. And this term here in parentheses is going to be our Y intercept. All right, so let's go ahead and draw what this looks like. And so I'm gonna to try to do this relatively accurately in terms of the values we had from our previous problem, but inevitably I'm going to fall short on that. Uh, so just keep in mind that this isn't to scale and not accurate, uh, not as accurate as it could be. So let's plot our ID up here and let's put that in units of milliamps and let's plot our, our VDS over here in units of volts. So what we're saying is that we had some VD over ID, or sorry, VDD over RD, which is going to be our Y intercept over here. So this is VDD over RD. And so we had five volts, and I believe it was a 20 K ohm resistor. So let's actually just scroll up here. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, so we had a 20 K ohm resistor. And so that value ends up being 0.25. So 0.25 milliamps. And so that would be the maximum current we could have. And we could also find the intercept with our voltage axis uh, just by setting our ID equals to zero. So if our ID is set equal to zero, we have our VDS is just going to be equal to VDD. So our other point over here is going to be equal to VDD, which in the previous example was five volts. So now we can draw our load line between those two. So it's just going to be a linear relationship. So we get something that looks like this, and this would be our load line. So we can sort of superimpose that on top of our family of IV curves. So let's go ahead and draw some in there. So let's say we have, let's see if I can get one for our Q point. So maybe our Q point is somewhere around there. And then of course we have some other we have some other family of IV curves along with that. So some below, some above. And so remember, there's sort of a continuum of these family of IV curves. They're not discrete values, but we could have any point in between these. And so with these IV curves, of course, they are corresponding to different VGS values. So in this case, let's say our Q point was on this curve right here. So this is our Q point. So we can draw some lines to our Q point values. So this would be just what we got from our DC analysis in the previous video. And so what we saw for that was we had a VDS voltage of three and we had a drain current of 0.1. And so we saw that this corresponded to a VGS value, which we can call VGS Q, which is equal to two volts. Okay. And so there's a couple of other things that we can note in this, in this low line relative to this curve here. So remember, we're also going to have some, some curve that corresponds to our VDS sat. So let's put that, um, let's do orange. Let's make that a dashed line. And so let's have some curve here that maybe looks something like this. And so this is going to correspond to our VDS sat. So this is VDS sat and so like we saw and so again i've not drawn this super accurately but what we would see is that this would be our vds sat for this particular vgs curve so on this curve that we're on and so we saw that that corresponded to our vgs which was 2 minus vtn which gave us a value of about 1 volt 
So let's go ahead and mark sort of our general areas of operation or our general operation modes. So let's do maybe purple will stand out a little better here. Uh, so we have up here, this area of our load line is going to be our non-saturation region. So non-saturation. And so remember that could also be called the triode region or sometimes the omic region. And then everything else down here is going to be our saturation region. So as we saw in the previous example, our Q point or the point that we analyzed it, the three volts VDS and 0.1 milliamp ID is in the saturation region. And so what we wanna keep in mind is that again, we move along this load line by adjusting our VGS uh, for a given fixed circuit. So if we adjust VGS, so adjusting VGS moves our Q point along our load line. And so what we can see is if we're increasing VGS, we're going to be moving up and to the left on our load line. So increasing VGS means we're going up and left on our load line. So for instance, if we look at this point here, maybe we jump up to some other curve. So let's draw one other curve in between here. So maybe we have some curve right here. So if we come up here to this next VGS, so maybe this is VGS sub two. So we have to stay on that black load line, but if we move our VGS, so maybe we increase VDD such that VGS increases. Now we're on this point here. And so if we keep moving our VGS, we keep increasing that, we're moving up to this point and eventually we're going to transition into our non-saturation region. And if we get high enough, we're gonna get all the way up to this 0.25 milliamps with a zero drain to source voltage. So again, it's important to sort of be able to visualize how we move along that load line as we're adjusting circuit parameters.